Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ventural Visionaries podcast. I'm your host, Fred Schonenberg. I'm so excited today. Uh, we're thrilled to have former NFL star and entrepreneur Marcus Colston with us. Uh, Marcus is the founder of Champion Venture Partners. Uh, he focuses on strategic diversification in sports, medical, and real estate investments, and driving sustainable growth while minimizing risk. Uh, in this episode, we're going to explore how Champion Venture Partners identifies game changing opportunities in traditional industries as well as looking at some emerging markets and opportunities uh, for their clients. Uh, Marcus is going to share some insights on building exceptional companies and expanding access to ownership for athletes and executives. So please join me in welcoming Marcus to the show. Marcus, thanks for coming. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. So could you share uh, with us a little bit uh, the transition from becoming an NFL player into uh, you know, entrepreneur and investor? Yeah, for sure, man. It's, it's, it's been anything but a straight line. Um, and and I, I really appreciate in your question the, the you know, the process of becoming uh, an NFL player, just because that's that's been the thing that I've leaned on more more often than not throughout the journey. Um, you know, I was fortunate and blessed enough to play 10 years and, and that gave me an opportunity to start building a runway, you know, pretty early on in my career. Um, so about my fourth year in, in the league, I, I started to invest uh, as an angel investor and, you know, just kind of fell in love with uh, not just the space and not, not just the investing, but, you know, really more so the, the connections that I could see between myself as an athlete and the entrepreneurs that I was investing in. And I was just kind of hooked from there. Um, so I've been in the venture world uh, for the last 15 years or so. Um, have been able to to build some experiences as, as an owner operator within sports, um, you know, about seven years combined between two different franchises in indoor football. Um, and, you know, just have, have been able to build a, a bunch of different skill sets uh, in a bunch of roles across a bunch of industries from, you know, consulting in, in the healthcare world to uh, some consulting advisory work in the cannabis industry. Um, obviously, most of my work is is kind of at the intersection of sports and business, um, you know, just being able to walk in and an expert on the sports side and, and kind of learn and shorten the learning curve on the business side. Um, so my, my journey has been one that's just kind of had some 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 interesting twists and turns. Um, I've, I've always tried to put myself in positions to not just be in the room because of what I did for a living as a player, but be in the room because I, I earned the right to be in the room, um, you know, so. You know, a lot of, uh, of humble pie and a lot of entering rooms and, you know, kind of, um, you know, in a mode where I was just I was learning first. Um, but all those different experiences over the last 15 years have kind of led to 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 this platform, Champion Venture Partners. Um, so I'm really excited about, you know, just the opportunity to kind of take those last 15 years, um, be able to pair it up with what I was able to do as a player and, you know, enter the space in, in a in a in a space and. Uh, perspective that I think is slightly different than than you know most of the people that I'll be competing against in it. Yeah, I love it. I, I want to dive into a little bit more of like your thesis and and, and what you're trying to do. But I, I have a question, uh, totally off script here. So I, I much different level of sports, right? I, I played D three basketball, uh, but mm -hmm. it was interesting when I stopped, right? Like there was something missing for a long time. Like I was trying to find that uh, the camaraderie. Uh, that the sort of like North Star, like you you know what you're trying to do, you're trying to win. Uh, how have you found that transition from being, I mean, you were one of the main reasons you all won a Super Bowl back back in the day, right? Like that and playing on the biggest stage there is. Have you have you found like venture and this this idea of angel investing and things like that? Has that is that a similar transition, right? Like there's all you always hear these stories of like. The, the transition is hard when you stop doing something that you were like singularly focused on for so long. Has this become that same sort of North Star for you? It, it has. It has in a lot of different ways. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure out where what my lane could be in the space. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that I that I figured out really quickly was, you know, most people think about, you know, the, the athlete journey as if as if it's, it's kind of the start point and its destination. But in reality, it's it's one long professional development journey, right? So in playing 10 years, uh, what I was able to do, uh, the success I had as a rookie, I had to put together a completely different strategy to have success year two and year three and, and all the way through year 10. So you're the same person at your core, but the way that you go about finding the same level of success looks different from year to year. 
And I think just understanding that at, at, at its core um, was really crucial in getting into entrepreneurship and getting into venture and being able to see that piece of it over and over again and, and realize that I'm not necessarily chasing an end goal. I'm, I'm you know, constantly working to become a better version of myself, uh, a version that's, that's kind of equipped to step into the next stage that I'm chasing. And when I was able to connect those two dots, that made the transition feel less, uh, it's still an urgent transition, uh, but it felt, it felt like it was less about trying to find the next thing the next one thing that I could spend 10 years doing and yeah. more about learning about myself in, in ways that is going to be able, I'm, I'm going to be able to kind of build those, those next steps as they come. Um, so yeah, that, that mentality and, and that, that, that shared mindset was huge and, and just kind of seeing the transition for what it was, you know, uh, you know, kind of a stepwise process. Yeah. I love that. It's such a like healthy way to look at, look at things <laughs> Any, for anybody, right? Like no matter if you have a sports background or not. Uh, okay. So can you tell us a little bit more about, Champion Venture Partners, like what's your thesis? What what are you all building over there? Yeah, so so Champion Venture Partners is is a a investment firm that we are focused on what we call the value chain in sports. Um, so most of the conversation around sports investment today is around you know what we call the big five leagues. It's NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, MLS. And while those opportunities, the valuations continue to rise, and those opportunities. Uh, look really good on paper. What we realize is that there are only a handful of humans on earth that have the the ability to cut meaningful enough size checks into those companies to actually have a say in how they operate. And you know, our thesis is is really around uh, us as 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 a team. Uh, we all have a sports background. We all come from from more of an operational background in the business world. We see the value in all of the companies that kind of make up sports and make sports um kind of create the the aggregate value that sports is right so everything from sports medicine to uh sports technology whether it be on the fan engagement side and and you know teams and clubs trying to get more bites at the apple with fans um or technology from uh from a payment processing or even a player development side um a little bit of media content uh hospitality real estate so we're we're looking at the the entire value chain of sports and what we're looking to do is build a long-term uh, evergreen portfolio of businesses that, you know, complement and create, make sports what it is, combined with um, a handful of clubs, uh, teams, and emerging leagues, and build this portfolio that, one, it, it has this upside and, and it has this intrinsic value within it that, you know, the portfolio itself can continue to grow. Um, but I think even even more importantly than that, we're creating it in a way that we're giving access to folks that traditionally wouldn't have access to uh, sports as an asset class. Right. Yeah. So um, as we move forward into 2025 and we unlock our, our and we launch our interval fund, um, that gives us the ability to to create this opportunity for anyone from institutions with, you know, one hundred million dollar minimums investments all the way down to retail investors that want to invest a thousand dollars to get access to 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 this portfolio. And ultimately, you know, get get a chance to to accumulate meaningful growth and, and meaningful ownership in in the sports asset class. Yeah, I love it. I I have a a friend of mine uh, who uh, she's unbelievable. She's gone on to become a a, a big VC. Uh, but I, I knew her way back when before she did. Uh, and and she reached out to me and she was like, "Hey, we're thinking about buying a team. Do you want to get involved?" And I just started laughing and she sent me over the pitch deck. And I'm like, I, I'm so flattered that you think I might be able to cut a check anywhere <laughs> near the amount like has crossed your mind. Uh, I'm in a different mm -hmm. league, right? So, but it's funny because like as somebody that loves sports, loves technology, loves all these things, like I would be very passionate about that, but you know, I can't go buy the Dallas Mavericks or whomever. Um, so I'd love this as a way to kind of, I don't want to say democratize that access, but to help people get involved in what is the upside. And you and I were talking before we hit record, like sports is one of the few things that like people want to consume live. It's yeah. insatiable, right? People like want to watch all different sports. Like I have a five-year-old and like we go and watch like, like random like high school sports around here because he just wants to watch sports, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, so there's something to it. I think it's a really interesting uh, 
a niche that's there. So how do you, how are you guys going to identify those uh, those initial opportunities or sectors uh, to kind of uh, you know one, once you have the fund right like in terms of deal flow and, and figuring out what to focus on. Yeah, so so if, if if you've been around venture, you know, anytime that you launch a fund or you plant a flag and say, hey, we're investing, um, here comes the deal flow, <laughs> yeah. right? So um, you have your thesis and people see your thesis and they're going to submit anyways. So we're, we're getting a lot of inbound deal flow, um, nice. you know, just from from the fact that that we are kind of in a niche and we are kind of, um, you know, our, our thesis is slightly different than most. Um, but again, you know, the, the fact that our team is, is, you know, we're, we're all business builders that have been in sports. So a lot of our deal flow is coming organically through, through our relationships and our ability to just kind of maneuver through, you know, the different layers of, of the sports business world. Right. So you have, you know, everything from the team side to the media side, to the technology side, and our team just has enough experience in all of those different buckets. Uh, to where we're seeing and and we're able to get into some some really interesting deals, um, you know, before they hit the streets. So, um, you know, just that combination of you know seeing the incoming deal flow come in and and being able to evaluate at, at a broad stroke um, the the companies that fit our thesis, combined with just the just the roots that we've been able to grow over time, just being in this industry as former players, as you know, business builders in the space, as executives in the space. So it gives us a really unique lens into not just, you know, what are the companies that are coming coming through the pipeline and, and where are they valuable, but it, it also gives us a really unique insight into kind of, you know, seeing where the trends are going and kind of trying to skate to where the puck is going. I think one thing that's interesting about the, the background of you, you and the team is it also, you know, in venture capital, right, there's money. You can write a check to somebody. Uh, but oftentimes it's like, okay, what can you do beyond that check, right? Like, yeah. how do you how do you differentiate the check? Uh, so yeah. what, what I think is interesting is is you all's uh, your background in, in ways that you could actually help the entrepreneurs too, and say, hey, like, hey, I can give you a check, but I can also open the door in these places because I've been there, I've done that, I have that experience or those connections. Do you think do you see that as a big value add for how you all are positioning yourself? It is the value add for us. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're we're smart enough to know who we are, right? We're we're not we're not your we're not a, a group of traditional fund managers that have you know ten funds under our belt with with performance, right? So we know you know that we know sports and we know that we're business builders, and you know the biggest piece of our value add is is this management team that we have that we can not just deploy a cap not not just deploy capital into a company and and just kind of sit back and and wait on a return, but Part of part of the investment thesis is to invest the capital, strategic capital, and then deploy our management team as a way to come in and help those founders, help that founding team really build that top line. Right. You, you see a lot of private equity firms, they come in and, and they'll invest the capital and, you know, their mandate is, is around efficiency. So they want to kind of strip the they want to strip all of the fat out of a business and, and have it operate as efficiently as possible. And there will be some elements that we can do from a technological side um, with our management team there. But, you know, our biggest focus is really around taking those companies that have had success. Um, they have this, this, this scalable revenue stream and, and they have these scalable relationships and partnerships. And we want to come in and accelerate that pathway. Right. So we want to come in and, and help them land strategic partnerships. We want to help them. Uh, we want to come in and help them open doors that they might not have otherwise have access to. So a lot of our value add is is we're leading with the value add that that we can come in and we can help accelerate your growth. And you know because of that, our ideal company is is that firm that you know like I said has had success and they're really at that inflection point to where most companies they get to that in and around that Series A, they're raising a bunch of capital to go out and hire um you know headhunters and they're going out and hire you know those people that can take them to the next level um the value add that we bring is is we have a lot of those people in-house that are coming alongside the capital uh which allows us to to again get into a company in a meaningful um interest uh, in a meaningful ownership interest but you know help to take that company to the next level and you know, obviously, if 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 we win as an investor, the the founding team and their team wins as as um, as team members, and you know, you kind of create this virtuous cycle uh, where, where everyone can 
you know, every, everyone is, is, you know, able to, to kind of extract their win. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. I mean, part of me, my, my mind went in two different directions, right? Like I could see this for uh, make it up like a sports tech type of play. And then you mentioned content, right? So it's, we'll make up an example. There's a, a new sports content machine that can, you know, put one camera on and creates a complete video stream of a game. I'm just making it up, right? Uh, and they, they've deployed, deployed it at some local high schools and it's working and you guys see this and you go oh like we could put this into every everybody that is not one of those five big leagues and we know the commissioners of these leagues so we're going to invest and we're going to we're going to unlock those doors so our investment immediately is going to go up just based on what we can do and then it's good for the founder that was where my mind went first and then i was like oh does this work for teams also like could you actually see a team in let's say a not top five league and you're like oh this is growing but they don't have the sponsorship sales side they don't know how to monetize their tickets right where they're they're fanatics their fandom like is they just haven't connected those dots but you all know the sports tech play that can come in and take that to the next level are you looking at both of those lanes yeah, you, you, you're spot on. I, I think with with uh, like the the more established teams and leagues, um, when you when you really start to break down the business model, if you take media and the media rights out of the equation, the margins get a whole lot slimmer, right? Oh, yeah. And what we see is an opportunity to take take that business model with with you know take take the media out of the equation, and we we see an opportunity to to be able to integrate technology in ways that maybe create you know, instead of the, the transient fan experience where you have, you know, a, a fan that comes to a game and you can monetize them while they're in that stadium for that three hours. Um, but then your job is to try to get them back in the stadium. Right. And you don't really have that that connection piece. If we can invest in technology companies and bring those companies into the teams that are in our portfolio, you know, you, you can now start to see teams get to a place where the relationship with fans becomes less transient and more about lifetime value of that customer. Yeah. Right. So at, at, even at the major leagues, being able to integrate the technology to tighten up the fan, the, the fan experience, tighten up that relationship with the fans, it's going to lead to more monetization opportunities. And that's at the highest level. Um, like you said, on, on, on the other side of the spectrum with some of the emerging leagues, you know, it becomes, it becomes this game of, you know, can we, how efficiently can we grow? And we all know that technology integrated into the landscape is that that ultimate you know scale factor. So can we go out and identify those those media opportunities? Can we go out and identify those content and those technology opportunities to not just you know not just stabilize the business, but can we create some differentiated value to where you know as an emerging team or league, you're not just competing against the other teams and, and the other sports. You're competing. You're competing against any type of entertainment. So it could be movie theaters, it's Netflix. So you've got to have some kind of unique value prop, and we see technology integration as a way to create that unique value prop within these emerging teams and leagues. So, you know, we we see technology as is kind of the great separator, uh, and you know, our team is is really well positioned to be able to integrate tech on both sides of the spectrum to add value. It's it's really interesting. We so at Bench Fuel, we do a whole bunch of things that are public, but most of our work is actually uh, we call it stealth mode, where we help really big companies uh, explore new technologies, startups to give them competitive advantage. And a couple of years ago, we did a future of the fan experience uh, for one of the big five uh, leagues, one of the teams within that league, uh, and it was it was so amazingly interesting because once you do remove the media rights. Right. If you take media rights and players' salaries off the table and you just look at the yep. business part, man, those numbers are a lot different than what you know shows up on ESPN every day uh, for the hundred million dollar mm -hmm. deals and stuff, right? And so you yep. look at like, okay, they're not just competing against the other local teams; it's against any other entertainment, any other intention, any other time you might spend doing anything uh, yep. for yourself, right? So, like, how do you make that fan experience, you know? I think one of the things that was interesting that we found out from this project was like, sometimes you're born into fandom, right? Like I, I joked that my mom like wrote letters to Mickey Mantle when she was little. And so like, I had no choice. I was a Yankee fan, like, like yep. immediately. And now I see my son multi-generations later that is like 
loves the Yankees. And like, that is because that's part of our like history and, and how we talk to each other. And it's like, okay, mm-hmm. if you're an emerging team, you don't have that. So how do you right. break right. out and get that sort of allegiance starting to build? And then you get the momentum and the flywheel uh, and technology, right. Is a really cool way to do that and, and make it more than that transient experience. hundred um, percent. What's your, what's your biggest, uh, What's your biggest challenge as you get this off the ground? Uh, and what, what would you like people listening to do to help you uh, make this successful? <laughs> so as you know, the biggest challenge in, in raising the fund is actually raising the fund. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so so we, we've, we've had, we've had a, a good amount of momentum and success to, to date. Um, and we are, we are really close to being able to close out the, this first round uh, that we're raising. So um you know for us we're, we're kind of slowly transitioning to that you know out of you know all hands on deck capital raise mode into all right let's get our let's get ourselves kind of get our ducks in a row let's get get you know finalize the due diligence and you know just kind of get our checklist in order of of the companies that we want to deploy into so um i i'm cautiously optimistic in saying that that i think we are we are we're, we're at the pinnacle of of that that you know toughest part and starting to move back down the mountain um but uh no it, it's it's now we're kind of starting to get into the fun part where, where we get to you know deploy and we get to you know deploy our management team so um you know now we're just kind of moving into a mode where the biggest challenge is going to be um the unknown unknowns right, right. It, it's going to be um you know, as you, you get into these companies, there's there's always going to be you know some some external factor you can't control uh, that you don't see coming, and um, you know just trying to put together uh, you know our risk mitigation is 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 really the, the biggest ongoing challenge that we're going to have. Um, you know, so slowly getting out of of capital raise mode and getting into deployment mode that that's that's where we see the risk moving forward. And and you know, fortunately enough, our, our management team is 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 really going to be, you know, at the core of, of, of our mission mitigation strategy. So uh, we, we feel like we're in a, in a decent spot, but, you know, always eyes open, eyes open, ears open. I love it. Well, let, let me ask you this and I'll, I'll let you get out of here. Uh, your job now is to look at the future, uh, you know, look out <laughs> seven, 10 years. How do you think sports or, or however you want to take it, sports technology will evolve uh like what what do you see when you look in the the, the crystal ball uh, that you now hold uh in terms of where things are going so it's it's interesting because i've all since i've got into venture i've always seen sports in the intersection of sports and technology almost as a proxy for what happens in the rest of the world right so i, I don't think that trend is going to stop i think um again that that transition from transient fan to lifetime value of customer throughout sports is going to be a trend that we see um continue to ramp up um i think at some point there's, there's going to be an inflection point with with a lot of these media rights deals and you know with that i mean you you saw what happened with tnt and the nba i mean tnt for as much as they've done you know as a as a media rights holder in that space they got outbid Right. And they're kind of on the outside looking in, in in one of the most visible leagues in the world. So I, I think as the price continues to go up on these on these deals, you're going to see more and more of these legacy companies kind of get get pushed out of the way by these streaming companies. And that money's got to flow somewhere. And I think there's going to be a huge opportunity for, you know, some of these emerging leagues and these in these niche communities to be able to grab a hold of of, you know, really valuable products and, and really exciting products and you know start to kind of turn them into inter- in, into those enterprise platforms like you see in, in the big five leagues so um you know i think you know obviously that's part of our thesis is to kind of be right there on the forefront of of, of that that shift um but yeah sports is is not going anywhere sports is has shown to be resilient even through economic downturns um as you said it's, it's the only appointment viewing that there is so yeah. If you miss it live, then then you're out of the loop, right? So, you know, I think I think between media, technology, and and these emerging leagues, I think that there's a huge wave coming, um, and we're we're just happy to be on the forefront of of you know of the wave happening, and and as the wave builds, 
but ultimately it's it's really about you know being being in a position to get other people a seat at the table as as these leagues and these this this whole sports ecosystem continues to grow yeah really well said i mean i we, we went out to Michigan this year, we watched the Michigan Purdue basketball game. Uh, and mm -hmm. on that same trip, uh, I played basketball at Trinity and Trinity made the final four uh, and they overlapped. And we watched the game, like we streamed, figured out how to stream it onto the TV in the house we were at yep. in Michigan. And we watched like the division three, like final four. And yep. I was thinking about it, my poor friends had to watch uh, a game that they had no interest in, right? But I was, I was all in. <laughs> Uh, and it's like, oh, like we had to watch it, had to watch it live. And like, I had to figure out where to get it. And like, I would have paid yeah. for it, whatever it was. Right. And like, that's a really niche, like, obviously you're talking a level up from that. Right. But like, I, I think there is such an opportunity for, you know, if you can't, if you can't be an owner in the NBA, you can't broadcast the NBA rights. Like, okay, there's yeah. other things, maybe one step down in terms of the, the, the investment needed to get in. Uh, they're going to be really robust mm -hmm. and interesting. So uh, I love I love what you're doing. I'm excited for it. Uh, thank you for taking the time to share with us what you're doing. And uh, we're wishing you all the best of luck. I appreciate you having me on for it.